Uh, he is a singer-songwriter, and it says on his website, I was particularly interested in this, he has deep and gravelly vocals. We've got to find out about the deep and gravelly vocals for ourselves at the end of the show when he performed. But let's just tell you a bit more about him now. He supported Ed Sheeran on his 2011 UK tour, and he opened for him again in the States in 2013. Mm -hmm. Ray J won Love Him Already, and he's here to perform for us with the deep and gravelly vocals. Uh, Antonio, hello. Hi. How deep and gravelly are your vocals? I, they can go quite low, I suppose. That's yeah. pretty low. Yeah, thanks. Is that your natural singing voice? No, it varies wildly. So yeah. sometimes you can be squeaky. Really, really squeaky. You'll okay. see some of that in a bit. Oh, great. We'll have the full range. <laughs> yeah. Now, how would you describe your music? Um, it's sort of uh, rootsy, singer-songwriter. I don't like using the word folk because folk means a lot of things. Right. And it is quite rocky because I do get quite loud and stamp a bit sometimes. So, yeah, somewhere in between. Yeah. Somewhere in between the two. And what, who are your influences? Uh, I get a lot of comparisons to Bruce Springsteen all okay. the time. Okay. Um, and I'm kind of influenced by a singer-songwriter from the US called Annie DeFranco quite a lot, and Damien Rice and that sort of thing. What's Annie DeFranco like? She's brilliant. She's, she's absolutely fantastic and totally underappreciated in her time, and you should all look up Annie DeFranco. Okay, you've yeah. all learned something new tonight, because mm. she's not really known over here. Mm. When did you start performing? Performing, I think, about uh, when I was about 17 or 18. Um, I started going to open mic nights and um, just playing in bars to like audiences of a very few number and um, and just got really addicted to it and didn't really stop. Do you think that process of going around the pubs and clubs and playing to small audiences helps you to hone your craft? Absolutely and I think I think it's necessary because you learn to deal with all the kind of stuff you're gonna have to deal with when you are a more successful performer. Like? Yeah like nobody being there or everyone ignoring you or when things go wrong and like your guitar breaks or you break a string which could happen tonight um let's hope not yeah um <laughs> or yeah or if uh, you know hecklers people coming on stage and trying to join in that kind of thing has that happened to you oh absolutely so what did you do to deflect them um sometimes you embarrass them into submission right um, like i once was playing a gig in shoreditch and uh some young lad who's a bit drunk came and tried to join me on stage and kind of like sing with me and dance with me and so i just out danced him that was my decision. I just started kind of like, you know, going back to back with him and, um, and he quickly <laughs> got embarrassed and ran off. So that fixed that problem. I am totally up for a dance off at the end of the show, by the way. Try it. If you want. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll show you my moves. What have you got coming up next career wise and what's the dream? Um, I've got an EP that is coming out at the end of March and it's available for pre order right now on iTunes called Sun. And uh, after that comes out, um, I'm doing a UK tour in April. And, and then doing a few more gigs sort of up and down the country with other bands that I'm uh, friends, um, friends with. And then the dream, uh, the dream is uh, to, to make it big, obviously. obviously. But um, yeah, I'd like, uh, I'd like to see what happens with the CP. Like, I'm really, really proud of it. Um, it's the most kind of representative of what I've been trying to make musically. And the song you're performing for us later at the show? It's called The City of Austin, Texas. <laughs> 